If Henry Ford II hadn't recruited Bunky Knudsen from GM to be company president in early 1968, the whole boss phenomenon might never have happened. Knudsen was a real stock car racing nut who felt that Ford should return to NASCAR dominance after continually struggling with Chrysler's 426 Hemis. He had a new race engine based on the Frank 5 Lima, so named for its original 3.85 inch crankshaft stroke and production at the Lima engine plant, Ohio. He needed to make it legal for NASCAR and in a hurry and nowhere in the regulations did it state that a model and an engine had to be built together. This engine was originally supposed to go into the galaxy to homologate it for NASCAR's grand national competition and to achieve this a minimum of 500 units would have to be sold to the general public. However, Ford decided to use the Mustang so the Mustang Boss 429 was born even though this car would never race in NASCAR. Affectionately known by enthusiasts as the Boss 9 and was produced for a limited two-year run as a sports roof only. Once legalised, this engine would then be transplanted into the extended nose of the Torino Talladega. This was done to get the bodywork of the Talladega officially homologated at the beginning of the 1969 race season because the Boss 429 engine was not yet being produced in sufficient quantities to homologate it for NASCAR. Like the Boss 302, the 429 was also styled by Larry Shinoda, who had been an ex-pop rider himself understood the desires of racers and enthusiasts alike. Shinoda was also credited for coining the name Boss because when asked what he was working on he said the Boss's car. The engine used four bolt main caps, a forged steel crank, forged steel connecting rods and featured aluminium cylinder heads with semi-hemispherical combustion chambers which Ford called the Crescent with large oversized valves set in at an angle so that the intake valve was close to the intake manifold and the exhaust valve was close to the exhaust manifold. Additionally, he employed the dry deck method, meaning the coolant circuit for the block was separate from the coolant circuit for the head. This method strengthened the block by removing the open coolant jackets around the cylinder and reduces hot spots by providing more direct cooling. Also, instead of using a typical head gasket, the Boss 429 engines had grooves around the top of each cylinder, oil passage and water passage for individual all metallic O-rings or Cooper rings to seal them. Although a head gasket was used, it only sealed the cylinder for combustion, so a failure at one point wouldn't compromise the others. This system had been used in many racing applications and allowed the engine to withstand enormous pressures while creating as much power as possible. This engine was later dubbed the shotgun, earning its nickname due to its large intake and exhaust valves, along with the powerful kick from the acceleration it delivered, akin to the recoil of a shotgun when firing. The standard carburetor was the 735 CFM Holly 4 barrel which was mounted on a high rise intake manifold. Due to the enormous size of this engine, a number of modifications were needed to be made to the Mustang in order for it to fit. To accomplish this, Paul Juice Carcraft of Dearborn, Michigan, who were their exclusive experimental facility. Production of the Boss 429 began in 1968 at the Ford Rouge plant. Here, adjustments were made to the front apron assemblies to accommodate the larger Boss 429 engine, along with modifications to the front fenders. Both the engines and the Mac 1 Super Cobra Jet Mustangs, which were donor cars, were then shipped to Carl Craft's new assembly plant in Bryan, Michigan, for both engine installation and further modifications. However, later in the production run, due to the build-up of engines at Carl Craft, full stop shipping cars with engines to allow for the increased width of the new engine, the factory shop towers had to be moved out by an inch on each side, and the front control arms lowered and moved out an inch, which would also help with cornering and handling. All 429s were fitted with competition style suspension, with front coil and rear leaf springs, staggered rear shocks and wider front and rear sway bars to limit body roll. This would be the first Mustang ever fitted with a rear sway bar, giving it better handling and making it a much more capable track car. Due to these engines, high RPMs and the endurance loads put on them, an oil cooler was also installed. This large, big block engine filled the engine Bone, making the car nose heavy. To counteract this and improve handling, the battery was relocated to the trunk. The four-speed top load and manual transmission was its only option. But unlike the Boss 302, which was available in both close and wide ratio, the Boss 429 was only available in close ratio and then coupled to a nine-inch rear-end Daytona-type traction lock differential with a rear gear ratio of 391 to 1. The integrated matte black front spoiler was designed to be 
shallower than a Boss 302 by an inch. This adjustment was made to compensate for the 429's nose weight, improved ground clearance and minimised drag at high speeds. The exterior featured a massive manually operated Ram Air hood screw, the largest ever installed on a Mustang. This not only allowed the engine filler to fit under the hood, but included a flapper system to control the flow of fresh air. Its controls, A for air and C for choke, were located inside the car. Like the Boss 302, the 429 came with 15 inch by 7 inch Magnum 500 wheels, coupled with F60 by 15 Goodyear polyglass wide oval tyres. Again, a first for Mustangs. High performance power front disc brakes were standard with heavy duty rear drums, but due to the space in the engine bay, the power brake boosted the steam to avoid contact with the driver's side valve cover. The first 279 models were fitted with the S code engines, and these were basically NASCAR style big blocks. Later 69 and most 70 models got the T code engine. The first T engines featured the S code's hydraulic cam and magnesium valve covers, but early in the T run, the magnesium covers were replaced with aluminium and a solid lifter cam. The third rendition, found in very few 1970 models, was the A code engine, which was basically a T engine with highly revised smog controls. To show how special these cars were, they received a NASCAR identification placed on the driver's side door, a KK and a number which stood for car draft, with KK1201 being the first Boss 429 and KK2558 being the last. To reflect this, the VIN number would show a Z in its fifth position, indicating the option 429 4V Boss. The first Boss 429 Mustang available to the public was called Job 1 or KK1215. However, it wasn't the first Boss 429 produced since the previous 40 models were built as either prototypes or test cars for crash and speed tests. The 1969 cars came in only five colours. Raven Black, Wimbledon White, Royal Maroon, Candy Apple Red and Black Jade with hood scoops body coloured and fake rear quarter panel air scoops. Black comfort weave was the only available interior with high back bucket seats and a full shifter. The front end had twin headlights with offset a Mustang badge. Side front marker lights were horizontal and below the bumper with separate rear light units. 1970 cars still had only five colour options but now with a more vibrant selection. Grabber orange, grabber green, grabber blue, calypso coral, and pastel blue. The hood scoop was now painted with low glare black paint and the rear quarter panel air scoops were gone. Interiors were now available in either black or white comfort weave with vinyl bucket seats and a hearse shifter was now standard. The front end changed to single headlights next to fake air scoops and the Mustang badge was now centralised. Side front marker lights were vertical and alongside the front air scoops with rear lights now enclosed in a black and chrome unit. Other features included were colour keyed dual racing mirrors and an AM only radio, simulated teak grained trim and a rim below steering wheel but no room was left for air conditioning. A deck lid spoiler and rear window sports lights were both options. The official horsepower rating for the Boss 429 was 375 but its actual horsepower was likely a lot higher. However, Ford did underestimate it for insurance purposes. The stock Boss 429 could achieve 0-60 in 6.5 seconds, a quarter mile in 14 seconds and a top speed of 128 miles per hour. In 1969, the Boss 429 engine won more than half of the 54 races it entered, with 11 wins coming back to back. It probably would have continued to do so, but a leadership change up at Ford meant that the stock car racing was no longer a priority. With Newton out, Ford killed the stock car program, and it was left to private teams to run their own cars. Ford produced 859 1969 Boss 429 Mustangs, including two Cougar Eliminator Boss 429s and 500 1970 Boss 429 Mustangs, including two Boss 429 Port Horses, making a total production of 1,359 cars. The Boss 429s spawned several specialist models. Funky Newsom's prototype Boss 429, or KK1205, was one of seven prototypes created by Carcraft for full and seemingly crafted to a 
pays the cost. Painted gloss black with a gold hood, gold C stripes and sports slacks, resembling a Boss 302, but labelled Boss 429 on the fingers. Inside, the Mustang sported a roll completed saddle interior, four speed transmission and air conditioning. 1969 Mercury Cougar Boss 429s. Two Boss 429 powered Cougars were built for track use and labelled clinic cars, intended for race oriented educational sessions across the country. However, they lacked extensive track preparation, prompting Dino Don to replace his Boss 429 with a full 427 engine for better performance, while Fast Eddie modified his Cougar with non stock exterior pieces but retained the 429 engine mid-engined Boss 429, internally named the LID Mustang or Low Investment Drivetrain, a name that used in standard full components. It was a collaboration between Ford Motor Company's special vehicle section and car car aimed at the nose heavy issue by relocating the engine directly over the rear wheels. This involved installing a standard Boss 429 engine and C6 all mag transmission in a fabricated rear subframe with a custom built transfer case and modified 9 inch full rear axle. Access was via the rear sports slab louver assembly. Despite successfully resulting in a 4060 rear bias, the project did not yield significant performance improvements, so was dropped. There is also some speculation that this could have gone on to become the Mac 2. Boss 429 Lawman. Carcraft created these cars for Ford as part of the 1970 Lawman Performance Team program. Only two cars were ever made, one being destroyed whilst being loaded on board ship, with the aim of bringing Detroit muscle cars to overseas armed forces and to conduct safety seminars to help reduce the number of road accident casualties. These cars toured the Pacific Theatre and several US military bases from Vietnam to Japan. Uniquely, they featured automatic transmission as opposed to standard manual transmissions in all other Boss 429s and boasted a supercharged engine of 1000 horsepower plus achieving a quarter mile in a staggering 8.4 seconds at 180 miles per hour. 1970 Boss 429 Quarter Horse or Composite Mustang. These were two unique prototypes built by Carcraft for Ford as a potential mid-year 1970 replacement for both the Boss 429 and the Shelby Mustangs. They started as Boss 429 Mustangs and underwent modifications at Carcraft where the original Mustang nose cones were replaced with Shelby sheet metal. Their hoods were sealed, a Mustang horse emblem placed centre grille, then Mercury Cougar dashboard were added. They were painted one in candy apple red and one grabber blue which was KK2061 and both had white interiors. The presence of the Boss 429 Mustangs with their distinctive engines left an indelible mark on automotive history. These iconic vehicles represented a pinnacle of performance and engineering prowess for Ford during this era. However, unlike the Boss 302, which saw a revival in subsequent models, Ford made the decision not to recreate the Boss 429 model. This departure marked the end of an era for this particular breed of high-performance Mustang, leaving enthusiasts with a timeless legacy and a lasting admiration for their unparalleled power and craftsmanship.